Indiana Magnum again. Still working on that Martini Henry rifle that I've been working on for a few nights now. Uh, now I'm up to... Um, I finished cleaning all the little parts. If you watched any of the earlier videos. I stripped the action. And I scrubbed up all the little parts. They're all sitting in oil now. Trigger mechanism. So that's all done. Now I'm working on the, um, the barrel and the receiver. The receiver is totally full of, full of large clumps. Oh, got a battery uh, notice. The receiver is just uh, totally full of uh, gunk and dirt and crud. Uh, but it won't take me long to clean that out. The uh, the barrel won't take long to clean the outside of it. If you uh, if you notice when you take the wood off, the bluing underneath it, it shows you what this rifle would have looked like when it first came out of the factory. You know, nice dark bluing. But of course, on the top that's exposed to the elements, there is no bluing at all left. Uh, I'm not going to reblue it. I'm just going to leave it like that. All I'm going to do is take uh, some very fine steel wool. It, uh, I think it's uh, 0000 steel wool and um, clean the outside, top of the barrel, and the side of the action. I've already done this side, cleaned up pretty good. What happens with the steel wool and the oil is if you just rub very, very lightly and slowly, it will attack the rust but it won't attack the bluing unless you rub too hard. So um, it's kind of a finesse thing. You just got to go over it slowly, gently, and nothing seems to happen at first. Then all of a sudden, the rust will start to go, and uh, but it won't. Like I say, it won't attack the bluing unless you push too hard. If you push hard, it'll take the bluing right off. Um, but I found it works pretty good. Uh, it's probably not NRA museum. Um, you know, technique, but it works when you're just messing with these old surplus rifles. Um, so the first thing is I just want to finish cleaning out the inside of this action. I'll see if I can bring the camera over and show you. It's absolutely, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but it's just totally full. This is actually kind of neat too. And again, I don't know if you can see it, but when you take the wooden stock off, you can see all the proof marks underneath. Where they uh, where they proof marked it when it came out of the factory and went to I went to be inspected, which is kind of neat. Um, and the, each one of those proof marks tells you something. If you know a lot about these Martini Henry rifles. So anyway, I'm just going to keep scraping away on this. And uh, anybody's got any questions or anything, feel free to ask. If I can avoid knocking the camera over, that'd be good. And I'll put her there. Yeah. So I just use these old dental picks. Well, they're not really real dental picks. They're plastic hobby store, gun store dental picks. They won't do any damage to the metal. Of course, real steel dental picks would make a heck of a mess. And they just loosen off the dirt, get it out of the cracks. For those of you who watched the video the other night that I was cleaning the uh, parts, you might remember I cleaned them in uh, hot soapy water, but I'm not going to do that with this. It would be nice to do that with this, but I don't want to take the, the butt stock off. Uh, past experience has shown me that if you take the butt, it's nice and tight right now, and if you take it off, they're often really hard to get back on as tight as they were. So I'm just, you know, I'm just going to leave it on there. There's no real need to take it off. It'll make it a little bit harder to clean in here, but not that much.
do something with this camera to show a little better what I'm doing. How professional is that for camera work, eh? And just, just scraping around down in there, getting the, getting the crud out. Tons and tons and tons of dirt. forget if you like these videos uh, give me some hearts I could always use hearts and if you got any questions you know, anybody wants to say anything got any questions just go ahead and ask coming along pretty good. And then to clean out the holes where, I, where the pins and screws go through, I just run my barrel cleaning brush into them a little bit. Just cleans them right out. Clean as a whistle. Crud. Hundred years of dirt in there.
guess I should introduce myself. Uh, I'm Indiana Magnum. I'm a uh, firearms instructor and uh, cowboy action shooter and uh, an author. I write uh, books on firearms. And uh, I've got a hobby farm here and I broadcast uh, little videos of some of my critters I have. Uh, people seem to find those entertaining. I have kind of an unconventional lifestyle, I suppose you'd say. But works for me. Looking not bad down in there. I love working on these old firearms. It's bringing history back to life. Again for the outside. A little bit of oil. And a very gentle polish with the very fine steel wool. Just spread the oil all around. If you don't want to push too hard, you'll damage the bluing. As long as you don't push too hard and you let the oil sit, you know, let it sit for a few minutes. Come on. Go right on the steel wool if you want. And I'm only, like I said early in the, earlier in the video, I'm only doing the top of the barrel because there's, there's no bluing on there and there's rust. And this will deal with that. The bottom of the barrel, which is preserved underneath the wood stock, is no rust and there's still, it's just perfect bluing. Looks like it came out of the factory under there. So there's no need to do anything down there. And this won't take all the rust off. I'm not worried about that. I'm just worried about getting getting the worst of it so it doesn't continue to rust. I'm not trying to make this firearm look like it did the day it came out of the factory. I'm simply cleaning it up, getting it ready to shoot making it shootable and stop it from deteriorating anymore. Oh, somebody gave me a heart. Thank you. Don't know who it was, but thanks a bunch. I don't always see everything people say, or I don't see the hearts they give me until, uh, until I watch the playback later. I think it's something to do with my really bad internet connection out here in the country. I think it prioritizes, you know, the signal going out um, rather than seems to be the signal coming in because I don't see anything on the screen and then later I find out there were a bunch of people watching and people were saying stuff and giving me hearts so if there's anything going on and I'm not saying anything you know it's not because I'm rude <laughs> it's just I, I don't see it I suppose I should probably sign off.
I'm told that these scope videos you're only supposed to do like 10 or 15 minutes so I guess it's probably been on that long so I'll maybe sign off I'll keep working away at this and then uh, sign back on in a bit and I am putting these uh, I'm saving these to my camera roll and I do put them up on my YouTube channel I've got uh, a YouTube channel just search for Indiana Magnum and you should be able to find it better already. And uh, one last plug of my book, Ivor Johnson Handguns, 1871 to 1941. Uh, it's available on Amazon.com. So everyone who's interested in firearms should have a copy of this book. Anyway, see you everybody.